Okay. So today we want to look into this three kings life of the king Saul king David and the Absalom each of these men held power faced tremendous challenge made decision that shaped their destinies and future of the people through these stories uh, we can unfold how they look at things and and what they made out of their lives the first man is called Saul now Saul was a son of Kish he was born in a very wealthy family and he had everything going good uh, but he was not very clever he was shy not very intelligent probably bit of a laughing stock it's not written in the bible is my assumption and, uh, and then his father lost some donkeys and father called Saul hey Saul go and find out where the dog donkeys are gone so Saul went out searching for donkeys and that was the time god inspired samuel to go and anoint the next king so samuel met saul anointed him as the next king and saul was not sure about what's happening then samuel said saul as you go you will see a bunch of prophets prophesy join with them and you will also prophesy so saul went and joined we saw the team of prophet as um, samuel said he met them and he joined with them and he start prophesying when people so saw prophesy they could not believe they laughed and that is it saul also became a prophet it's 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 uh, by listening i feel like they have treated saul as something good for nothing fellow and he went searching for the donkeys and he came back as an anointing with the anointing to be the next king the first king you know he had such a wonderful opportunity to set a benchmark on how to be a king and he, he he has an opportunity to go down in the history as the first king of israel and uh, he was happy but he was shy then the time of insulation came to be to, the, to, to make him the king they were searching for Saul and Saul is missing they search, search, finally they found Saul hiding among the utensils so they pulled him out from there and they made him as a king and God gave the first mission to King Saul he had people running serving for his personal life and army and God gave him the first mission on him to go and conquer and the prophet said to Saul when you go there you destroy everything don't bring anything that's unholy so Saul went he did the work but he did not obey everything he found that's valuable everything that he found as good he brought back with the king Agag he been told to destroy everything of the pagan but he brought thinking that they are good so he came back and he met samuel and said look here i am obey what you have asked me to do then samuel asked then how come you hear the bleating of the sheep behind you oh they i brought them to offer sacrifice not to my god not to our god to your god samuel was very hurt samuel said to saul you missed it man you missed the chance this was the chance for you to be established as a king but you behave foolishly the kingdom will be torn apart from you you know i have come across people in my life one performance they done well they get so overwhelmed they get puffed up with the pride you know there are one time achievers i never achieved again i remember when we started the church when we were mr international one young boy who who was known to me very well from kerala he came and he, he had nothing absolutely nothing not even clothes to wear so i met him and i found he's very poor i said i'll help him and uh, i call him come i'll help you and i tried to help him and he's a very good singer very good musician very good songwriter so he wrote a song and he always asked me i want to sing and one day 
in mr international i gave him to sing this song you know and he sang the song so well but as he was singing the song i could feel the demon has entered in him evil spirit has entered in him in the performance and that was the last that one performance he lost his balance and he got messed up got involved in things that he should not involve left the church totally got goofed up you know when you achieve things you got to remember it is not your ability it is the grace of god i remember talking to san when he came to church and he had a lot of challenges lot a lot a lot of challenges and um, he started a music school without even knowing how to play the guitar he went to people's house to teach music listen to the song on the radio and he taught and he came out as an excellent music teacher probably one of the taught to teach is one of the best music school as i know in goa as of now we have done amazing things in the past but starting was a very small beginning and um, the point i want to say he he came and uh, he he had a lot of things to is concerned about but i remember telling san god can make anything out of you and i told san he was worried about his gifts and talent he used to follow me like a little boy always on my finger always came with me and i i remember telling him san there are hundreds of people far more smarter than you they could not do what you did you know you are able to do because you trust god i'm not flattering we are constantly fighting always enemies and uh, and um, it is it is your attitude that matters the most it is not your ability you know saul went for his first war and he had an amazing victory he took all the victory on himself you know what saul did he even erected a altar for himself a, a, a memorial for himself as a young boy god picked him from the midst of utensils god called him from the search of donkey in and put him in the palace gave him thousands of men and women of his choice to serve him on the personal level or to be his friend guard and rear guard but when he had his first victory he said i got it all down prophet samuel said saul you acted so foolishly this was the time you could have been established to be a king forever but you goofed up Saul remained as a king even after that for 18 years but he never had a chance to enjoy his palace he was always running after David to kill him he was desperate to kill David Saul the moment the holy spirit left Saul a distressing spirit from God a demon came upon Saul it was torturing and tormenting have you seen some good people become bad and behaving nonsense you wonder how did they become so see reason is this anointing left when the anointing leaves you you are giving a room for the devil to take control of your mind especially if you are a man of god if you are moving in the spirit of god and if you turn away if you don't follow the anointing you are making a room for the demonic spirit so the people around Saul saw that Saul has been tormented by the demonic spirit some of them came to Saul and said hey come Saul why don't we call somebody to come and sing some songs for you so that your spirit get calm so they said we know one boy called David son of Jesse he's very good he's very prudent and very good in playing music can we get Saul said get him literally Saul found out this is the man who's going to take my place you know holy spirit and his work never stops i'm on the stage as your leader if i mess up if i my days are over god will pick me and drop me out and somebody else will come in my place god's work never relent god's work never wait for a man whoever is a man who's available 
you know available teachable and faithful he is a man whom god used and if you start thinking that because of me everything is happening then god will be convince you no not because of you you know the ministry is not about you it's about jesus church is not about you it's about god you we may meet in a earthly building in a earthly manner or use earthly material but remember church is divine it's spiritual it's a body of christ is a house of god you must learn to give the respect and the honor that belongs to god if you don't give you may get away now but in the long run it's not going to be good for you Saul got a evil spirit he was distressed he tried to kill david many times but not even once he could get david but david got him right if god is with you it doesn't matter who is against you they'll never win even an army comes against you and camp around you in the midst of the army your god is able to protect you Amen. And you all know that I got a high court case came against me, sue motor, whatever it is. Uh, there may be a, a, a army of the enemies come around. I was telling last week, you know, the day I got that notice, and I'm sitting in my house wondering what to do. High court sue motor. I don't even know what is sue motor meant. So I opened the Google to find out what is sue motor. Oh, then this means the court has decided to take a case against you. by its own their own will as if i did something great mistake i can't remember anything i done wrong so a friend of mine came to the house he said man you better stay away from me don't stay here and my lawyer said there may be an arrest warrant take a pre bail you know so they cannot arrest i didn't do pre bail i did thought of going away then i said no point because i'll carry the mobile they'll track me through the mobile and they pick it why to get arrested by running away is better maybe if they come i'll get the jeep with them and go home go to the minan you know i was sitting in my house every vehicle noise i thought it was a police jeep it's not easy it's not easy it is difficult everything may say should i stay should i run you know god remind me of words from the book of nehemiah he says should a man like me will run i will not that's what nehemiah said when there was a scheme against him they said come down to the plain of uno we have a prophet they will tell you what's going to happen see there's an order issued you better come down so nehemiah said why should i go down and make the work of god to suffer then he said should a man like me will run no way i said okay i will also say the same thing then god give me another verse he says that you must endure hardship as a good soldier so i should not pray to avoid the hardship i should not look for a way out of the hardship i should endure what is meaning enduring means you all know speak english correct what is mean means stay on stay on with it so i learned that i have to stay on you know it came like elephant and went like a rat you know you know fear is dangerous you know what is fear means false evidence appears to be real what you fear is nothing when you come to it but the more you stay away from what you're frightened more it become like a monster anyway soul god messed up you know what do you see in the life of king soul a king who depended on himself more than god he can be called a prideful king or a king with 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 god's call but rebel he was he was a rebel king you know god said you are rejected because you don't of you know if god tells you to do something do it as he says don't don't add any flesh into it god told samuel you go destroy it. don't bring anything back you don't come back saying that i am trying to do this to do a favor for god no you are not trying to do a favor for god you have a greed for money greed for wealth 
You see another man in the life of Elijah, a man called Gehazi. Elijah was a man of God. There was a Naaman who was the commander of Syrian army who had leprosy. And one day, one Jewish girl saw that her master has leprosy. She said, "Oh, I wish if my master could go and meet our prophet, he would have healed." The words went to Naaman. Naaman said, "I will go and meet Naaman. Prepared everything. Great army, great man, lot of wealth, so many, so many bag of you know." Yeah, of wealth, and he came to meet Elijah. Elijah didn't come out. He got furious. You know, who do you think you are? Do you know who I am? You know, we have people coming around like, do you know who I am? So Elijah said, who cares? He said, you want to be healed? Go to the river Jordan and get have a bath. You'll be healed. He didn't. He didn't even bother to come out. Naaman got furious. Then we got better river than this dirty, mucky river Jordan. He was very angry. He was going back. One of his servants said, "Master, listen. Why don't you just try?" He so he said, "Okay." Reluctantly, he went to Jordan and he had a dip, and his leprosy gone. He was completely healed. Now his total attitude is changed. He came to Elijah to say, "Thank you." You have been such a blessing. I've been hiding my leprosy for so many years. I was pretending as healthy. For those come to know, I got leprosy. They wouldn't allow me to lead. I'll be thrown out. But thank you. And he said, you know, you brought so many, so many bunch of blessings. I don't remember the correct word. He gave to Elijah and said, take this is my blessings. This is my offering. Elijah said, I will not take any anything from you. I will not take anything from you. You cannot, you know, by Elijah refusing to take the gift of Naaman made the respect for Elijah very tall. Naaman said, "From today, I know your God is a real God. Give me some sand in the soil of your your land. Whenever I want to pray, I want to kneel down on your land and pray." There's so much the respect increase, but there was a man side of Elijah looking at him saying, "What a fool! You should have taken some. You know, he's giving you free. Why can't you take it, Elijah? It's free, and you done a work. You healed him. You know, there are people who call and ask for money for healing. You know, there are pastors who who will say, "I'll give prophecy. Come and meet me and give me money." There are there are some pastors came to go as well. Ten thousand, if you want to meet him personally, I would say go to hell with it. God's salvation, God's work is not for sale. If anybody sell God's work, is an abomination to God. That fellow will not go very far. Anyway, Gehazi could not sleep. He is thinking about all this. Well, Elijah has refused. So after some time, Gehazi thought, "I'll just go quietly and get it and keep it." Heidi. So Gehazi went behind and a man said, "Wait, wait, wait! What happened? Some guests came and my master told me to collect some from you." He said, "How much? One?" He said, "Take two." He came back, kept everything hiding, came to Elijah and pretending everything normal. Elijah asked him, "Where did you went?" He said, "I didn't go anywhere." He said, "My spirit was with you." I know where you went. He said the leprosy that left Naaman from today will be upon you. So, Eli Naaman Gehazi did not got well; he got leprosy. So Saul been asked. This is working. Okay, Saul has been asked to go and destroy everything, but he bought the cursed thing. By that, he became a cursed man. You know, partial obedience is as good as disobedience. Don't start in the spirit and end up in the flesh. If you start in the spirit, finish it in the spirit. The God who started a good work in you will complete on the day of Jesus Christ. Don't be hasty. Don't get impatient. So, you see, King Saul as a rebel king, a king. 
who has become ungrateful a rebel king who started rightly but he was a very humble simple ordinary man but little blessing got him totally puffed up what happened my ipad i'll give you one punch okay he listen he opened see again is gone okay right so he lost everything then comes the next king is david now david was a courageous boy there is nothing much for david to boast all that david had is that he was a man after god's own heart the king soul is called a man a down, man of proud pride and disobedience his pride made him to disobey god as a result he lost what his his challenge and power was Saul's biggest challenge was the inability to fully trust and obey god his securities and fear of losing power led him to make impulsive decision often driven by jealousy paranoia especially towards david his misuse of power was evident in his relentless pursuit of david who was anointed to succeed him souls pride lead him to his downfall so what is the greatest thing that you have to learn from the life of soul it's obedience obedience is better than sacrifice when samuel spoke to soul he said obedience is better than sacrifice you know god expect obedience than the abundance it is the obedience who bring the abundance now second guy is a king david the king david was one of the many child of his father jesse his brothers elder brothers who were in the army and david was in the field looking after the sheep not a great start but he was courageous and he was devoted he didn't know many things he never been to city he never seen big life he never been the part of the army but he was courageous and he was devoted to god most of the psalms of david was written while he was in the wilderness with his sheep he had nobody to talk except few bunch of sheep and a god above but david did not waste his time he spent time with god one day he had a chance to go to the army field to give some food to his brothers and he went and he saw that everybody is running and hiding in the caves he stopped some of them and said hey what's the matter why you all are running they show oh, man there is a guy called goliath he is so big and his shield is so big and his sword is so big his spear somebody else carrying his spears and he looks and he comes and scare us every day so david watched this yes, to they watch he showed Goliath is coming. So he said, "Why you are all scared of this uncircumcised Philistine? Give me a chance. I will go and cut his head off. How can he defy the armies of God? You know, though David was not a part of the army of God, but he knew the power of the army of God. His brothers were a part of the army of God, but they did not know the power of the army of God." you know you don't need position you don't need title you don't need anything if you have god in your life it comes out it comes out every way every way when everybody was running out david said i'll run in he said give me a chance he was kept on talking his brothers came and met him that you are a insolent prideful guy go back and be with the sheep otherwise all the sheep of us you know if you are from the village you know that brothers who are doing well they buy the sheep and a dumb brother is given to look after them i am going to canada you see a 200 300 600 sheep walking in it's owned by different people correct no queer is not owned by the guy who run he is a caretaker so these brothers who working in the army must have sent the money to buy the sheep and his father bought the sheep and put david to look after so the brothers are telling david get back and look after our sheep what are you walking around here but david could not resist he could not go he is still walking around telling everybody now why 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 you are keeping going man we can kill him you give me i'll go and kill him to so find the news went to soul soul said who is this young boy they said there is one young boy is keep on barking talking big thing bring him here so so david was presented to soul and soul said you he said yes i can do it 
So probably in my mind, I thought Saul must have been another born idiot. Go and die. There, your brothers are here. They are running the caves and holes, and you, Bacha, go and die. He said, "Okay, you want my weapons, my they, my coats? I'll give you." So he gave. David tried to put it, and he felt like so small inside of all that. He said, "No, no, I don't want all this. Please take it. I'll go my way." You know, we all need to have our own style. Amen. We need to have our own weapon. Don't have borrowed style and borrowed weapon. And I have a clothes store. I call it Be You. You know what it means? Be yourself. Be unique. I tell Bobby, we, we, when we designed the showroom, we said we want to help people to design the clothes which is comfortable for them. We don't want them to wear Shahrukh Khan, Rav Salman Khan, Amir Khan, Kuna, whoever it is. You design your clothes. You will help you to make the way you want it. How many of you believe you are special? Hallelujah. You are anointed. You are special. You are ordained to be blessed. Then you travel all across the world and meet all the eight billion people who are existing. There is no one like you, Sam. There is no one like you, Julia. That's why I'm struggling. You know. <laughs> There is nobody like you. You are very special. You are very unique, and you are you are above everybody. Amen. Say it to somebody, I am above everyone else. Hallelujah. Say it to somebody, I can do all things through Jesus who strengthens. So David had the relentless, undying, courageous spirit. He believed that. My God is able to make me to do anything that I wanted. He said, "In the name of God, I'll cut your head and throw it to the birds of the air." Then finally, Saul allowed. He went into the battlefield. Goliath walked in. David walked in, and you know what David said to Goliath? You know what David said to Goliath? Anybody know the Bible? Tell me. Ha. Huh. You come against with the spear, javelin, sword, and shield, and big, big, massive chest plates, and helmet, and and the shoes, and all this. You are a nine feet, ten inch tall guy, like a monster. You are coming against me like a big, but I come against you. I come against you. That's what you all must learn. When the enemy comes against you like an ugly, with an ugly face, when the enemy enemy come against you like a monster who's far bigger than you, you must say that I come against you in the name of God. I, I said this quite a few times. Goliath looked at David and said, "Silly fellow, he's not a fit. He's not a match for me. He's much, much. He's a better. He's not a match for me." <laughs> You know, he was laughing, cursing David, teasing David, calling all kinds of filthy things. But David looked at him and said, "Man, this guy is so big. No way I can miss him." You know, the bigger you are, the higher the fall. When the big fall, sometimes it's very difficult to get up. The smaller you are, easy to fall and easy to get up. So Goliath's fall was mighty. So when you look at David. You can see a man with the God's own heart. David was called as a king with the God's own heart, a king of courage and humility. He had the courage to face the enemy, and at the same time, he had the humility to be humble. Saul spent eighteen years thinking only one thing: kill David. Though he was anointed as a king, he had an army and the palace and the choice of women and choice of wine. But where was Saul most of the time? He was in the jungle searching for David. You know, if you, if God is not with you, if you are not walking with God, no matter how much wealth you have, you don't get to enjoy. Yeah, some months back when I was praying, you know, one thing God spoke to me is that you know, being blessed is one thing. But enjoying that blessing is another thing. Some people are blessed, but never got an opportunity to enjoy the blessings. Some people are blessed and they enjoy the blessing. You don't need so much, man. You need only little to be happy. 
the more you can get is nice but it doesn't make any difference i'll tell you as you get older and richer your choice of eating become more limited i used to eat 1 kilo beef when i was 23 24 you seriously the first time i ate 14 15 chapatis it was so nice now i can't have a little beef i got problem man when i had no money i want to eat now when i have money i can't eat you know i'm living in a ration morning one jackfruit chapati this much you can't eat afternoon boiled vegetable raw vegetable little piece of chicken again another chapati my mouth is watering when i say about food <laughs> evening also little i look at all that ice cream sitting in the fridge juice i try a little all the juice and all this all that what's the point i got membership in marriott you get free coupon for lunch and dinner very regrettably very unhappily i give to others because i can't go if i go i had deeper then my cholesterol goes up diabetes goes up all nightmare so Listen, you don't need a lot to be happy. I like one song in English. It says that you know, thank you for for blessing me. If I have shoes on my feet, clothes on my back, food on my table, thank you for blessing me. I mean, that's all. So David had his heart on God. He never went pursuing soul to kill. He never told other this soul is trying to kill me. Why don't you all go and do something to stop him? I am fed up, man. Eighteen years. He didn't turn to God and say, "Complain." What kind of anointing you gave me? I was happy with the sheep. I was killing lion and bear, and I was all out the king of all the jungle with my animals. Here I am running in the jungle. I have only a bunch of thieves and robbers and broken people. Where a soul has twenty thousand army. with weapons but there is one thing david has which soul didn't had is god no matter who moves out of your life even everybody can move out but make sure god doesn't move out of your life no matter who turns you down even the whole world can turn down but make sure god doesn't move out of your life so david remain devoted to god David waited for his time. You know, David was not a great guy. He murdered, he raped, he lied, and he he kept revenge. He was not a great guy, but God still called him as a man with the God's own heart. You know why? Every time when he realized his sin, without defense, he knelt down and he prayed. When Nathan came and said, "David, you are the man who did it," he he could have said, "Kill Nathan or put Nathan in the jail." You know there are many kings done in the Bible like that. They you know they put them in the stocks and chain, but David repented. David had a heart of repentance. We as Christians, we cannot guarantee that we'll be holy always. We as Christians, we have no assurance in our flesh that we'll never commit sin. Is there anybody has an assurance you will never do sin? You are a liar, big liar. You know we have no assurance, but we have a faithful, loving God. Bible says, if any of you commit sin, go to God, who will cleanse you, forgive you, and remove your sins forever. If you if you confess your sins, one John one nine, God is just and faithful. You know we are not flawless people. We are. we are the people of the flows when i say i'm a christian that doesn't mean i'm better than any of other neighbors of my hindu or muslim it's only means that i have a hope in christ that's all i may have more problems some of the hindu friends of mine and um, i feel they are better than me some of the my catholic friends so grateful so polite so gentle I see envious qualities, good qualities in others who is not even believers. So when I say I'm a Christian, 
it doesn't make me anything great it simply means that i'm a man who has a door of opening for forgiveness and a fresh start that's all it means nothing else i have a poem i want to read for you before i continue i read it on wednesday prayer it says like that when i say that i am a christian i am not shouting that i am clean living i am whispering i was lost but i am found and forgiven when i say i am a christian i don't speak with this pride i am confessing that i stumble and need of christ to be my guide every day when i say i am a christian i am trying to be strong i professing that i am weak and i need his strength to carry on When I say I'm a Christian I'm not bragging of success but I'm admitting that I have failed I need God to clean my mess When I say I'm a Christian I'm not claiming I'm to be perfect my flaws are far too visible but God believes that I'm worth When I say I'm a Christian I still feel the sting of pain I have my share of headache heartache so i call upon his name when i say i'm a christian i'm not holier than thou i just simple sinner who receive the grace of god amen so that's all i am that's what the david was david was nothing greater than saul or absalom what made david great every time he realizes sin he went back to god then david commits sin committing adultery murder as a result david opened a pandora box of sin into his life as a result there were incest in david's house you know we are liable for every sin we commit wages of sin is called what gift of god is eternal life so every sin of you has consequences <coughs> you commit some sin you see nobody saw it you got away no you are not you are just adding up your penalty but there is a good news the gift of god is eternal life if you confess your sin god is just and faithful to forgive david said in psalm number 32 you know blessed is a man whose sins are forgiven whose iniquities are covered it is only god who can forgive nobody else is god who can make you right again so every sin you commit it open the door of god's wrath or punishment in your life of course if you repent god will forgive but some of the sins we may have to pay for it so david committed adultery and murder he he killed one of his best friends grand daughter's husband and he killed in you know, he raped granddaughter and he killed his best friend's son in law so later part as a result of that sin entered into the life of family of david there was a man called amnon all of a sudden he created developed a passion for his own sister tamar who was a sister of absalom <coughs> he become desperately infatuated with her he could not think of anything else except her his love pelas become so uncontrollable it made him sick you know when lust gets into it if you're not careful it makes you an absolute stupid guy there are kings who lost kingdoms because of adultery there are great men and women fall you know you whatever the rani that lady who was um, what's her name the the tv channel who was arrested killing her uh, what's her name ah indrani she was such a star but sitting in the jail she was living in the five star hotel the best of things your sin if you don't repent it comes searching for you one day you better repent you better cry you better give up so david opened the room for sin into his life as a result his own son got some kind of filthy lust after his own daughter and he couldn't resist there was a tricky cousin of amon amnon that guy said what's your problem and he said man i'm just so much passionately fascinated about this it is 
tamar i can't resist he said you want to i'll get it done for you so he devised a plan he got got king david agreed tamar came cooked the food and said let us share and he raped her do you know after raping her he hated her more than he loved her so he you know girls remember never give in to sex the man who take you sex before marriage is the same guy will despise you after that you must maintain your purity so anyway <coughs> he pushed her out pushed her out of the house don't know i don't want to see and she went out put the ash on her head cried walking around but my friend david never bothered abner absalom came and took the sister and kept her you know absalom waited for 3 years for david to do something about it david did nothing then absalom could not resist and he he made some drama i don't have enough time to say he made some drama got some girl lady involved and all and and finally made david to realize hey i'm your son you shut me out for so long so david told him to come in he came back and he waited for four years david still did not meet him so four plus three seven years the hurt of absalom has boiled up into a into a anger and revenge so what did absalom done he went and hired 50 men to run with him and he hired a chariot and he started going like a king son you know he had nothing but he borrowed and he would go at the city gate and stand there when people comes complain problem and he will make them he will bible says he'll put his hand around their shoulder and rob their heart say what happened man if they say this is my problem oh you're coming from such a far place i'm so sorry that there is nobody is here to listen to your problem you came all the way to meet pastor this pastor has no time to meet i'm sorry i wish pastor will appoint me to look after you no i wish king will appoint me to look after you and he kept in he kept on talking in such a way within a short period of time all the men of israel fall in favor of absalom your manipulation can take you into big places don't don't think nirav modi more choksi you know mervin choksi lalit modi vijay mallay all this number of people or you go to church well robert morris or william macdonald or bill haywells or um but the hill song brian hosen there are plenty of stories like that people who rose into power but they lost at the end anyway so he made a revolt and one day he said now i'm going to go to the city make sure that everywhere people announce absalom king of israel live forever he managed to topple david david had to run away now i want to i want i'm drawing trying to draw a comparison between three people saul david absalom absalom did this now what was david's response david said absalom my son he cried and david left he said okay if he want to take the kingdom so be it i'm going i want to god so serve god so absalom is here want to kill david david walked away then david's people said that why don't we fight you are a good fighter will will go and fight i will kill him david said no no i don't want to do that then some of the other carry guys carry the ark of the covenant and said we are coming with you the ark of the god's presence should be with david because david is the man of god david said no let the ark of the god remain where it belongs if god want me to come back he will bring me back who knows if god want me to be in the jungle so be it i'm going you know where you live it doesn't matter so absalom did that but look at the david's respond saul decide david is rising into power want to kill him absalom decide rise up in power because of david's mistake david said don't touch him David said to his army don't touch him he's a, he's my son he's anointed and David really thought Absalom become the next king so Absalom is a sign of ambition without obedience or ambition without patience 
If you want to become the king, Absalom, you will become a king. You can become a king. But Absalom did not want to wait. And then he got into power and he was starting hunting for David. He wanted to kill David. Again, he never got David. What he got? Finally, he got hanging on the tree. And somebody has to pierce and kill him. You know, when, when David heard Absalom died, have you read that portion? David cried and cried and cried again. See, that's a man with the God's own heart. He doesn't count on your sins. He count on his love for you. When Saul came against David, David said to Saul, why are you coming against me? You are the anointed king. And when David's people want to kill Saul, David said, don't try to touch the anointed man of God. Don't try to lift your hand against him. Even though he lost the anointing, he was demon-possessed. But David still respected him. Here is Absalom come against David. David say, leave him. So what kind of person you are? Are you Absalom? Are you a soul? Or are you David? In these three people, I'll close it. In these three people, you can see three behavior. One is a rebel king. One is a humble king. One is a forceful king. You know, you got the kingdom by force. Which type of person you are. But remember, we all are kings. Do you agree with me? Do you agree with me? You don't agree? You read your Bible? What the Bible says about you? Eh? Come on, somebody who, 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 who knows the Bible says, we are the kings and rulers with God. Bible says we are the royal priesthood. We are a chosen generation. We are special people, the God's own, as God's own. God has wonderful plan for you. God has a plan to bless you and prosper, but what kind of attitude you nurture? If you have an attitude like David, you will die in the fullness of your age. And you'll go down in the history as a great man of God. Nobody, we all know all the sins of David, but none of us disregard David. We sing and say, I want to sing like David sang, or to dance like David danced. Saul was from a very good family, but none of us say, I want to be like Saul. Dave, Absalom was David's own son. We say, no, I want to be like Absalom. They both were looking very good. You know, God's love cover the multitude of your sins. Don't, don't live in regrets or shame. Live in God's acceptance. Shall we all stand together? Hallelujah. How many of you want to give yourself into God's hand this morning? And say, God, I want you to make me what you wanted me to be. I want you to close your eyes and pray with me this morning. From these three characters, what we learn is one thing. Humility and devotion is all that matters at the end. It's not about your talent. It's not about your ability. It's not about who you are, where you are born, who is your parents, how much influence you have. It's all about your attitude towards God. Your attitude will determine your altitude. Your attitude, if your attitude is good, it brings abundance in your life. You know, when God blesses you, he adds no sorrows to it. But if you go and find your own blessing, being, or playing all gimmicks, you're full of regrets. I know a lot of rich people who live in regret beyond repair. Their life is so broken, it's beyond repair. Even if God wants to repay so hard, it went to that level. But those who listen to God, they will do great exploits.